Hey there, welcome to the Ecosystem Information Update. My name's Dan, I'm one of the marketing people here at Slug Disco, the publishers of Ecosystem. In this video, I'm going to run you through all of the main features coming to Ecosystem in its first major update. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, so we're here on the main menu of Ecosystem. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, load up a save. So if we click New Game here, um, and we'll just choose a starting area, uh, we can see here that we're at the beach. If I buy some plants, get some random ones, and then we can just place these down. Okay, so as they spread, I will just get a few more um, plants to place. So now we've got some plants, what we can do is we can go down here to the F5 tab button, um, or just hit F5, and we'll bring that up, and you can see a range of panels here. Now obviously we've just started a new ecosystem, so everything's a bit empty here. Um, but because we've placed some plants, we can see what's happened here. So at time zero, that's the that's generation zero, you can see that we, we didn't have any plants. So from generation zero, we moved on to generation one, and you just saw then that generation two had just happened, that just finished, so the data for that became available. And you can see how things have spread over time. So we've got our grass rack here. Um, obviously there was zero of that at the start, and then there was 15 in generation one. 18 when generation 2 happened. You can see here that these are all the different types of plants that we've got in our ecosystem. You see that when we hover over their name, they'll highlight. Uh, that just indicates that you can click on them. And what that does is it turns off the data from the chart. So if you want to just focus on what happened to your milfoil plants, you can do that. You can toggle off all the others, keep milfoil on, and you'll see that we had 0 at generation 0, we had 3 at generation 1, 18 at generation 2, and 17 at generation 3. We can, of course, toggle the wall off, toggle them all back on. So now we've got some plants, let's try and have a look um, at placing some creatures. So we'll go to the creature creation menu, and we'll just put some foragers down in our system, and we will let them do their thing and try and establish a foothold before we revisit the data that's available for fish. Okay, so we can see over here that we've got a couple of species of fish. So if we revisit the uh, panel, you can see that just like the plants, the animal population chart does the exact same thing. So we can see our different uh, creatures, different species down here, and we can toggle them on and off, um, just as we can do with the plants. So now we've got some species. You'll also see over here in this uh, species panel, uh, we can see the ones that have gained a foothold. So we've got the chinbara and the larbiter. Um, we have one chinbara and 20 larbiters. Uh, we can see their diets, their mating style, but that information was already in the game previously. The main thing here that's new is we've got the predation limit, soft cap, and mutation rate. And I'll go through what each of those does. So predation limit, as it says, if the population dips below this number, the species will no longer be targeted by predators. So basically, you can set a minimum that you want that species to maintain. You can see that with the larbiters, there's always going to be 12 of them. Once we introduce predators, they won't take that population down below that. Uh, there's also the soft cap. So you've got the predation limit, which is basically like the minimum uh, creatures that you can have. And then you've got the soft cap, which is kind of like the, the other end, like the maximum. It will fluctuate below kind of this soft cap. Um, but if you hover over it, it explains what it does. So if the creatures have eaten enough to sustain their population at or above this mount, then they will devote their time elsewhere so that they'll go and mate, they'll swim, etc. Here, you've also got the mutation rate, which just scales how frequent uh, mutations are in the species. You can now set that and you can set that here. Um, and the last button, which I won't press just yet, but it's cull. Um, and what this does is it culls the entire species. So if you're not happy with a species for any reason, the cull button's there to just get rid of them from the game. The next thing to note about the individual creatures of a species, down here in the rank, uh, you can see these medals that are next to their name. And what these are is that means that Addy, Lionel, and Stephanie are the top of the kind of the ecosystem chain. They've got a high energy count, which means they're more likely to go on and breed um, and be successful in their ecosystem. So that's what these uh, little symbols are donating. It's just kind of like the champions of the ecosystem. Um, and you can see that information here, as well as their speed, size, intelligence, the amount of limbs they've got. You can also boost and cull individual creatures from this menu as well. Uh, previously, you'd have to go down to the interaction menu, click on the creature, boost it that way. Um, but you can just do that all from here. So we can give Addy a bit of a boost being number one. And then if we don't like Stephanie, we can pull Stephanie just directly from that button. 
Okay, so here I'm just going to jump into a, another save that's a bit further along with a bit more data so I can go through the next kind of part of the update with you. So here's a save I prepared earlier. Um, if we go down into the information chart, uh, you'll see that we've got a few different species here. So the Troma are the foragers and the Basidores are the predators. So as well as the kind of over, the change over time in the animal population, uh, what you can do is you can click on a species name and see the phylogenetic tree. So in the tree, you can get a bit of an overview of what happened with the species. So we can see that Alberto had his joint limits widened, um, Jeanette body connection moved. You can see that we have a screenshot snapshot of certain fish, which you can view here. And clicking on one of the creatures will give you a bit more information about them. So their energy, the mutations that they had, um, if, they've, if they've died, their cause of death, uh, the mates they've had, the children they've had, how many kills of their predators, etc. Um, and let's just find another one here. You can see here we've got um, Alberto. He was born on generation 12 and he unfortunately died at generation 13. But he died of old age, he didn't get eaten horribly, so that's great. So yeah, you can zoom in and out of this, you pan around with left mouse. And you can get a really good overview of how the species has evolved over time and who the kind of the key keystone creatures in that species were. So here we've got Aubrey and you can see her offspring were Alyssa, Doris, Sharon, Belkis and Valley, um, and they're all up here. So you can see that the children they've had and how they've spread. So that's kind of why it's like a family tree. So we just head back out of that menu. We're back at the main menu here. Um, if we want to see Carl, the Troma, is currently exploring. Um, if we want to see what he's up to, we can just click the name and that'll take us over to Carl and have him selected. So here's Carl looking for mates. Just going about his, his business, as you'd expect. So the last kind of main feature, really, is the cool creature um, button. So here you can see we've got 40 Bassadori. You can see them dotted around the map. Um, and these are the predators. Say that they were kind of out of control. They were eating too many of the fish too quick. Even with the predation limits, you think, oh, I shouldn't put the predators in. I want the speed. I want the, my forager species to just gain more of a foothold. Um, you can hit the cool button. Just click delete. And you can see that they've all been removed from the game. Um, if you want to click show extinct, you can see all of the previous predator groups that I've called in this save here. Show extinct is there so you can get a good overview of kind of what's happened before, not just what your current uh, ecosystem's like. Okay, so there you have it. That's an overview of the main features coming to ecosystem. We know players have been asking for more information and control over their ecosystems, and this is the first step towards giving that to players. This is just the first major update that's going to be coming to ecosystem over the course of early access. So keep your eyes peeled for more information on those updates. And of course, to stay up to date with everything ecosystem related, you can go to the Twitter and the Discord. They are linked in the description below. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.